semi-automatic rifle outside an Obama event said, in Arizona, I still have some freedoms. Nobody was disputing that. When it turned out, though, he was one step removed from those who feel the Branch Davidian shootout was manufactured by the government. And in our third story in the countdown, also openly sympathetic to a 90s militia group whose members were convicted after being accused of conspiring to blow up federal buildings. Mr. Hancock is also an online radio host and frequent defender of the Viper militia. In July 1996, federal agents arrested a dozen of the so-called Vipers, along with the 90 high-powered rifles they had, 500 pounds of the bomb-making compound ammonium nitrate fertilizer, blasting cord, blasting caps, gas masks, bulletproof vests, and uniforms with a Viper insignia. Asked about the Vipers, Mr. Hancock said, quote, this militia scare is what got them. It was all manufactured. The entire case was made up, just like Waco by the same government, he says, that lied about 9-11. Hancock said he knew all the Viper defendants, was good friends with one, and added, I've been feeling this coming again. It's the same people. It's Rahm Emanuel. It's Janet Napolitano. It's Hillary Clinton. All these were the same people that were doing it back then. Let's turn to the director of the Intelligence Project at the Southern Poverty Law Center, Mark Potok. Good evening again, sir. Hi, Keith. We started this explanation. Would you continue it? Who populated this Viper militia group? What's its relevance to today? Well, I mean, this really was a classic militia plot in the sense that these were people who were gathering uh, weapons, not only weapons, which they could, I suppose, make the argument were defensive in some way, but as you said, uh, this huge amount of info. This, of course, came right on the heels of the Oklahoma City bombing, uh, and so the uh, government was justifiably very worried about this. You know, not only that, but they produced films in which they surveilled a whole series of federal buildings, uh, you know, which uh, apparently they were attempting to bomb or plan to attack. That is who they were, uh, you know, and I think the relevance really of the group is that they are a reminder of just the level of criminal violence uh, that in fact came out of the militia movement and can continue to come out of the radical right today. The Be oh, it's not? I, I said it may not. Tell me about that. We need to hear about that because that's against the law. This is what the Republican Party is these days, huh? Yeah, it's just A like bunch of lying, cheating, violent people. Yeah, I know. We're so violent. We're well, so violent. Well, you just violent. got finished saying you were, we're going to... So it was not going to be peaceful. You're right. That's a factual statement. It's you not going to be peaceful. That's a factual statement. It's you not going to be peaceful. That's a factual statement. It's you not going to be peaceful. The Viper defendants pleaded guilty to lesser weapons and conspiracy charges. Mr. Hancock said then they don't have the criminal records, they just like their guns. Obviously a lot more uh, than guns had been confiscated, but what differentiates the gun fetishist and even the ammo stockpiler uh, or even just the over-enthusiastic defensive person who I guess exists from the groups that should be taken as serious criminal threats? I think the ANFO is really what separates these groups. You know, when you start stockpiling uh, the materials to make huge bombs, and ANFO, of course, was the very same material used to blow up the uh, Murrah building in Oklahoma City, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you are no longer talking about even a kind of paranoid defensiveness. You're talking about an offensive action, and I think it's quite clear that's what was going on in this case. Mm -hmm. You know, it's also worth mentioning that the feds very often uh, brought weapons charges instead of conspiracy charges simply because because they are so much easier uh, as a practical matter to make in court. And that's the, the, the uh, ammonium nitrate fertilizer you're referring to, just to clarify that. Um, this may sound like a facetious question, or maybe it's an obvious one, but what the hell does all of this that this man is talking about have to do with health care reform? Well, almost nothing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the relationship is simply the idea which has been fueled by the fact that we have a liberal president, uh, by the uh, work that's been done in the auto industry and in rescuing banks and so on, by the idea that the federal government is becoming this giant behemoth. And of course, these are people uh, who think that the federal government is perfectly willing to murder people uh, in order to enforce a political uh, orthodoxy. Uh, this is exactly what Hancock was referring to when he said that Waco was manufactured. It's that idea the government blew up, the, or was perfectly willing to blow up that building or to attack those people in Waco in order to uh, force them back into a political orthodoxy.
Do you have any idea, is there any linkage evidenced that the people who have organized the protest against these uh, of town halls, the interruptions of them, had any idea that they would be bringing these people out of the woodwork, people like Mr. Hancock? No, I don't know that. Uh, what seems very clear, though, is that the people who are coming out and some of the things that they are saying, not to mention the weapons they're carrying, really are reminiscent of the central ideas of the militia movement. That, you know, the government is evil. It can be in no way trusted. It is perfectly willing to murder your grandmother, uh, you know, or, or any person who has too many guns or in some other way flouts orthodoxy. Mark Potok of the Southern Poverty Law Center. It's always terrifying and illuminating and necessary all at the same time. Thank you, sir. That's a factual statement. It's you not going to be peaceful.